Thank you very much, Sada. That was wonderful. Our last reader tonight is Charles Alexander. Charles Alexander writes poems, publishes books, makes books, teaches poetry, and other literary works. He has published six full books of poems and 13 chapbooks. He has been engaged for some two decades on the work Pushing Water, whose first volume was published by Cuneiform Press. The second volume, titled At the Edge of the Sea, Pushing Water 2, has just been released by Singing Horse Press in San Diego, and we have a few copies here. Charles directs the Chax Press and co-creates a variety of works and projects with his partner, the visual artist Cynthia Miller. Charles. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everybody at, at Malvern. I'd be really happy to be in this place. You know, as somebody who does those things with poems of words, this like feels like home. Do you think there'd be a lot of places like this, but there aren't? So please. Uh, buy a lot of books, you know, <laughs> because they'll just buy more from presses and it'll keep going around and around and we'll get to keep coming here and feeling good again and again. It's wonderful to read with these people and hear those words. So I'm going to read mostly from this book, um, At the Edge of the Sea, Pushing Water 2, and then a few more recent poems, and I'm going to try to read to not read the poems in this book that are 15 or 20 pages, but to read shorter ones. <laughs> this is Pushing Water 59. There's about 70 or so sections so far. Waters become warm and birds plentiful. Yellow and brown, black, white, and roseate. Long bills, short nibs, spoon bills hover or stand Shores I have been to and stood have been cool or cold. Shores today are hot and the skin responds with a magic exchange, water of its own. We become our places, become our waters. Omnes possibilia. Has the far-flung field landed here? Has Burnham wood given way to live oak, ash, wetlands to the south. Where have we come? Where are we going? Gather and disperse, contract and release among the hot, wet lands, among the wet, hot air. Anethanau could be a glimmer in the dampness. Anethanau is an old Welsh word, kind of means the valuable things that are hidden. The poem of the ash makes me think that just like yesterday in our day before, well, night before last, in our ash tree, or the day before last, there was a owl, a great horned owl up there all day, just going, yeah, yeah, and somebody went, and another one answering you a few blocks away. And at least there's poems because you don't know where they are. Weird, and that's W-I-R-D, which some of you probably know is an old English word that means fake. It sounds like word. Weird. Weird. Word. Or door. Or dream. Or wonder. This too. These too. The sea too. 66. The sea to dis-ease and ease become the same form of order, form or order, in a box upon the sea. 67. The eyes are eyes, are ass. It is perceived the way the light goes in and through the holes. The light is affirmed. The way the light stops in the hole of no light is affirmed, the light through the holes, and the light stopped at the holes, the confirmations and the end of confirmation, the glory, the comedy, the glory, the horror, the comedy, the glory, which is the human, which is the human, which is the human. 
68. And worth is in the water, light is in the water, breath is in the water, sight is in the water, letters in the water, children's blocks afloat, thought is in the water. 69. Interval, almost octave, scales beginning and possible end, not end. As soon as two notes sound, a swoon sound of two, note and known ascendance, recognized at once, a poem recognized more than written. Part two, a love supreme resolution, note below the waterline, above the waterline, an octave, an open mouth, a sound, mound, a wound. It's a long poem here, which I'm not going to read all of it, but I'll read just a little bit of it because I know there's at least one person, no, at least two people in this audience who are fans of the poet Ed Dorn, and this takes a line of his to begin every section of it, and it was written uh, June a couple of years ago, when uh, it was a pretty dark June in terms of what was happening in American streets with shootings and things, so. The air of June dips into a bit of a swamp these fine days. We'll be together. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. The air of June sings. S sings. Tree, tree, up, tree. Sings air alive. Not that old spoon, but a new June. The air of June sings. A bird springs, yellow bird in blue, or yellow sky colors bird, or all the colors, chromatic scales, variations spinning, the air of June singing. In the air of June, pools in the cities, policed into monochromatic hue, you, America, singing foul song in the air of June. This air, this June, no reticent volcano, but a full flow out, full flow in, engulfing us in the air of June. The air of June cuts across, across stones from the strawberry field where faded flags are strewn above a congregation of bodies, and we are going somewhere. Not here, not anymore. The air has gone a wandering. The air of June is too deeply occupied to say if it breathed, and it mistakes sincerity and honor and asks what is true. I ask what is true. Needless, you say, how so? And who are pawns, or where are knights in the air of no June castles, no enclosures of what we need to occupy the air? The air of June sings a song to clean the air, a long, hard song in our long, hard throats, a song for months to come. Pushing water sings in the June air, sings with others, with the many colors, the mongrel, the unwritten airs. June climbed and June fell upon pushing water, who stumbled and fell and pushed up and flowed and tried to make sense of the air in his ear, of the head in the air, of the ongoing story of the June air, of the air of June. Prepare if June shall come again, and we shall rest on the trim grass, a grape and pear be peeled and passed, and the asked for tears arrive in the rain. And we ask to sing a different air, if June shall come again and retain a possibility in the fruit not yet ripened, in the stones not yet cut.
think the last one I'm going to read from this book is just a couple of the very short things at the end. Uh, I stopped numbering them and I just put before the last few pages, furthermore water. The remaining bits, the lowering tide, the Andalusian moon, wet moon among you. For love is what is. Do you want to? Yes! Ride and dismount while the queen with her flowered offerings dreams new conquests. Gorgon, or the story begins. Go or gone, not with the wind but the water. Tide comes in. We enter the wave again, hold and not knowing kind of a sometimes repeated frame, refrain in both the first and second volumes of that work the, um, about being inside the wave of the world. These are uh, poems that mostly wrote in November mm -hmm. while in Kit Cod and um, I just picked 12 sections of this, which is probably going to be my next book, there's like 104, but I picked well, they're all very short, to, uh, that just got accepted into this uh, end of the world anthology. I don't know, maybe that's not something one should even contribute to. <laughs> anyway, from a notebook, can it be just one word today? Can it be just one word today? Can it be just one word today? In the clouds, on the beach, in the rain, not rain, Forgive me for wanting just one word, just one light, perhaps, just one day, perhaps. The tree outside my window is bare, the tree behind it, yellow leaves. The path to the ocean, 1.7 miles, just one word today, or one point, or one mile, or, or, or. Now these are titles, so I'll just pause them a second. The land simply sits as a curved spike between ocean and bay. We live as a spike on green. We are given the land. Maybe swallowed if warming projections don't correct our lax behavior within a few years, or perhaps even now when the curved spike lands in our laps. Gold nib pale blue ink, blue body, blue ocean ink, dark body, black ink. Words draw themselves out of such surroundings if we let them. Tonight the full moon rises. From the water tonight, the press of air stands us up, straight toward blue ocean ink, black ink. Words sip and swallow our shadows in the bright night. Dahlias in her garden undulate in red waves. The garden and the room, the pattern in red and gold, soft sinking chairs with blue pillow, cross pattern of pale green on gray wall. These lived spaces absorb us. They contain a history of bodies in motion and conversation. The way we contain the past and repeat it, vary it, mistake it, in Tavistock Square, she knows and begins a conversation with us through the sittings, the walks in a park. If we listen, we might know one another, mix the molecules, lift up, look up. A friend says we have all that we need to change. We have a few good guides, many words, many waves, patterns on the wall. For all its beauty and bounty, imperfect. The turn of the line in a wave of inconstant rhythm. Whoso lists and they or somebody flees the plane. 
the misfits, the mistress eyes, the sun unseen, the tricked out and wicked out, the painted fine wine. Come live in some configured garden yet unhedged. From such an age, the words split and multiply. In the margin of a book, the question, what is knowledge? The underlying reminder of the inadequacy of human relationships, shuffle past, say nothing. The mind knows, with opium or without. What she gave the world unrewarded and weighed with stones in the water. She drew a line in the center. We crossed it, crossed it out. All come to the simplest things last, and with a push beyond. Savory pre-winter light and the undertow of a wave, one crashes to sand and rock, open to the hurt of the body, the blood of the everyday, gathering raspberries in first beauty, the several splashes of red on apron, the juice of a year in a moment hanging on a limb of a tree as if the fall to earth may not be possible. It is possible. It is done. We are unmarked, young as if new, as if the wind only speeds by, as if the wave only crests. Q is a letter, and Q is a friend who speaks of philosophy turning to poetry, and away, this tuning, this turning, what relates thinking to writing, the living present, the documentation of the living present? We tame or do not tame the wild energy. We gaze at the wild energy. We are witness and within the wild energy. A deer came in the office window as a voice on the phone just told me and I am two or three thousand miles away on the spit between ocean and bay. And the deer shook its head, shook its blood on files, on printers, on papers, on the floor, on the world of work and words. And the deer has its world, its season of rutting, its mad crashing through the office window, around and out again into the day, bloody from the encounter. And this is all I know of the incident, all I know the matter of the blood and the deer and the glass shattered on the floor. The deer lifted. He lifted after I had sat about 25 minutes. He went from orange, yellow, brown at the bottom into the blue above. He lifted. He rose. Not suns or glory, or crowns or story, but sand and wave and step and save. No thunder roar, because the shore has been calm if gray, and song sung has only been what one cannot, has only been what one can do, not trumpet or alarm or raptured strain, but strong and set to faith in time, and time's turn or hinge, or pivot in one's ear with help from those who also sang and paced and exited the state of things unquestioned and unalarmed. And so the horse is strong, the bird is high, the seal in the wave barely seen, and only words have we brought down and brought to bear on this day, these last days, these only days, we have to dare to determine what to do, to dream and be dreamed, do and have done.